Because he's still run, he's still he drives. Driving. Cleaned up the appendices a bit, but sometimes those are a little yeah, right, rough right. looking, so I cleaned those up. Well, I did. Hi. The contract stayed the same. Well, I mean, it was announced kind of in October, and so some, you know, Yolanda on my board. So, Gail, did you get the contract? <laughs> I said, yeah, I would, I would call Beth first and see what she All knows. Right. And I'll ask when I get back to so like kind of get a heads up. But, um. <clears throat> Email me. It's, you know, I always like to give a forecast to the board. Well, you have a board to me and say then? Or? No, no. Yeah. You know, every now and then they ask me, and Yolanda will ask me, and Serena will ask me. <laughs> the people that use the service will ask me. Yeah, I think that was on my desk for a total of two days, maybe. Well, thank <laughs> you for moving it off your desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and I got the gavel now. Certainly, I should to call the meeting to order at, was it 931? And I believe we have a quorum, but if everyone would go around the room and um, introduce themselves. <laughs> Why don't we start with you, sir? Ted Schweitzer, City of Cook Creek Transportation. Ralph Power, Teller Senior Coalition. Maggie Reed, Teller Senior Coalition. Stu Smith, Brum Concord. Sharon Brown, Fountain. Kevin Girardi, Discover Goodwill. Lucy Cruz Laporte, Discover Goodwill. Megan Karch, Blind and Low Vision Services, Division of Oak Rehab. Courtney Stone, the Independence Center. Joe Vaccaro, Community at Large. Uh, Gail Nassel, the Amber Cab. Uh, Fred Hare, Yellow Cab Company. Jacob Madsen, Mountain Metro. Joe Urban, Area Agency on Aging. And Bethany Sheldon, PACG. And Red Williams, the ERTA Jack. Thank you. Anybody else behind the poster? So thank you for being here. Um, I believe we do have a quorum. Um, has everyone had a chance to look over the agenda? Any changes or additions or deletions? Or? Um, if I could request a legislative discussion oh. at some point, maybe before before the assessment piece, I'm not sure where that would fall. But You'd like to add a legislative, legislative uh, update? update. update. Um, that might feed into our final like, the assessment piece. If we can do it before, that'd be great, but open to your call. So if you're saying the assessment, is the assessment piece, is that the training information sharing, or is that the framework? framework? For action. So, uh, so maybe it's just information sharing, and we'll just keep it there. OK. <laughs> we'll just be very deliberate about it, looking for the legislative update. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody else? Um, Would the agenda be uh, approved as amended? Do we? Do we? I forget. Yes. You approve? Oh yes, thank you, Mr. Procedural <laughs> Roberts Rule Man. <laughs> I read it in the book. <laughs> 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 so we have a second. 
Yeah, so do we have a second on the agenda? Second. second. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay, everyone had a chance to look over the previous month's minutes, which was um, December, and we had nominations and awards of uh, drivers. And um, any other, uh, any comments on, um, on the minutes? Do I hear? Motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve, yes. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Woohoo. Okay, public comments, please. Number three, anybody have any public comments? I got some stuff I'll stick in there. It's more probably more informational. But um, the agenda, for lack of a better term, the sign up sheet for presentations for 2017, uh, I'm going to send around. We didn't get a real good response last time, so we're going to encourage people to. Put yourself on there. Even if you presented last year, there's new people on the uh, on the group, and there's there's new people uh, or there's new things that you're doing. So we want you to, to sign up regardless, because I think if uh, most of the organizations are involved here, with 12 months, we ought to be able to get everybody in. There. So I'm going to shoot that around. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about um, is very briefly is the call center, which is up. Operating that was announced at the last PPACG board meeting. I was really disappointed that there wasn't standing applause, but <laughs> it, it's up and going. So uh, everybody's in the same room. We got some kinks we're ironing out. Um, relative, a lot of them are technical, relative to phone systems and things like that, um, and sharing of rides. But um, it's a start at any rate. Right, the um, route match. Um, person has come and interviewed every agency to understand what we're doing and how we're, um, what our expectations are and what our issues are. Because I think it's part of our contract, um, each agency was to get several hours each year of training and support. And I believe last year that did not happen. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, um, but this year they are going through that. and. Um, because as you can imagine, it's a very technical software, and um, there's no way to learn it all at once. It's just really by being involved in it and then um, understanding what you don't know or where you need to improve and how what it help them train us how to use that software better. So yeah. That that group is currently housed in a temporary location at at Mountain Metro, um, in a actually a conference room. I believe they are scheduled in early April, late March or early April. Is that right? Yep, and construction still is on schedule, which you don't usually hear for a couple months at a time. <laughs> usually something gets in there, but it's still on schedule. Last I heard. So that they will week. move 100 yards to the south here in a couple months. And it's really, it's going to be a very nice, very nice setup. Okay, so that's all for public comments. Um, Joe, if you want to, <clears throat> excuse me, to lead the election sure. of officers. Um, <coughs> it, it, within the bylaws of the MCC, we can um, have, form a nominating committee or take nominations from the floor. As long as I've been around here, which is not that long, a couple of years, um, those have always come from the floor. So uh, I would open the floor to nominations for the officers. The three officer positions we're looking at are uh, chair, Vice Chair and Second Vice Chair. And we would start with the Chair. So do I have a nominations for the Chair position? I would like to nominate Gail Mills, considering she's doing such a fantastic job. Gail is eligible for a second term. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do we hear other nominations? Sharon. I'll, I'll just second it. Okay. I, I know. Gail, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> Moved it at close, I guess. Okay, hearing no other nominations, uh, all in favor of Gail Nails as the chair of the MCC, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Great. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have an acceptance speech. <laughs> we do not have Do we have any nominations for vice chair? Uh, I would note in that conversation that Mr. Fred Hare is also eligible for a second term. I nominate Fred. <laughs> second. 
Kevin, Kevin seconded. Okay. Uh, do we hear other nominations? I move nominations, Club. Okay. Second? Okay. Um, all in favor of Fred as vice chair, first vice chair. Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Um, I will now open up the nominations for second vice chair. Dick Hyde, who is not here today, who is the one that currently fills that position. I do not know if that's Dick's first year or second year. That's his first. His first. Wait. Dick's first year. Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, I suppose that he could be elected in absentia, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will accept nominations for second vice chair. Dick Hyde. <laughs> <laughs> Other nominations? Uh, hearing none. All in favor of Dick Hyde for second vice chair. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Good continuity. Seems to me, too. Yeah, he's got that. That's good. Um, so we're moving very quickly. How about number five on the agenda? Training, information sharing, and coordination opportunities. I know that Ms. Stone has something to do. And, and I think Jessica was, Jessica was here to weigh in, too. I don't know if everybody knows Jessica McMullen, our policy and communications person. So. Go first and chime in if there's anything extra. Oh, for sure. Um, so two things. I guess I'll start with a less formal legislative. It's not quite legislative, but um, our CDOT commissioner, Rocky Scott, is fairly new to his role. It's only been since October that he's been appointed. And so um, I took the opportunity with uh, a group of stakeholders that work around alternative transportation just to meet with him and sort of talk about needs with people with disabilities and biking and walking and um, bringing up those, just sort of highlighting that those are things he may not hear as much about. So I had some good interaction with him and there might be some updates from that. Um, I think mainly his, his piece of, of input was that PPECG is, is the best mechanism for moving all of that forward, especially from a regional standpoint, which I think is what we're coming from. So just more to give you an update that um, he was very open, wanted, he really wanted a lot of information as far as the in, the communities that are impacted and population, like who is it that really needs alternative transportation? Because I think we've got a really wide representation, but maybe not necessarily the specific numbers to say these are the number of people that are impacted by all of this and over the next 30 years it's going to grow by this much. So we need to start planning now for how to to meet the needs that we're already, um, we're already recognizing are coming around the bend. So that's one thing. Um, the more legislative update is um, there is a bill uh, that I believe is scheduled for its first hearing on Thursday. It's uh, Senate Bill 1711. And I can't remember the specific, specific format or the name. Um, but as far as topically, it's really a needs assessment of the transportation needs for people with disabilities in El Paso and Teller County. Um, Senator Lambert, who's our uh, person from District 9 up in the Northeast of Colorado Springs, who's really taken this on, he has a heart for veterans and for people with disabilities. And so this first bill is essentially, I mean, it's a, it, it's a pilot demonstration project, but essentially what they're looking at is ways to assess the needs for people with disabilities around transportation, as well as identifying ways where new technologies could be implemented to meet those needs. Um, identify funding sources. The, the way that it's formatted, he's um, suggested, I think, nine different, uh, nine different folks from state agencies to serve on an oversight group. So I think it's DVR, School for the Deaf and Blind, um, the State Council for Independent Living. So well, relatively widespread of people. And then they have a list of stakeholders that they want that oversight group to get in contact with to, to develop those needs and identify sort of the framework for what a potential pilot could look like. So ideally, through 2017, they're doing this assessment. Um, and then by the end of December, they'll have to present a report uh, back to, back to um, the legislative body as far as recommendations. And ideally, those recommendations would include, we would like to do a one-year pilot with this potential funding source to implement this new technology that might 
provide rides across El Paso and Tal I mean, who knows what that looks like? I'm not, that's really what the, the purpose of the next, you know, seven or eight months is, is to develop what that could look like and um, see what options are even out there. But I do think there's an opportunity for this body to, to weigh in because I think all of us have a pretty vested interest in, in making sure that need is identified. And honestly, I think it is focused on people with disabilities right now, but I do want to acknowledge too that the senior population has such a, a large oversight or overlap as far as needs, but I don't see it specifically just being people with disabilities, although that might be the, the sort of initial focus that ideally if we're serving the needs of people with disabilities that we're also inclusive of the needs of seniors as well. So with that in mind, um, I just want to put it out there. Um, it doesn't look like this initial bill is going to come across a whole lot of opposition just because there's no fiscal note attached. It's just, it's not going to cost anything. Let's just figure some stuff out um, next year <laughs> as we build up to what we might actually want to implement, where we might need to find some funding. I would imagine there'd be a little more work on our part, but more of a heads up and I'm trying to stay as close as I can if there are needs for people to pop in and just say that this is important. Um, and Jessica might have some updates around that as well. I know our CEO is testifying at the hearing on Thursday, kind of representing, representing our group. So if you have specific needs you'd like to include or if you want to get involved with that process, um, feel free to let me know. But I think it's really exciting. Um, I had a little conference call. It's, it's called, if you're not familiar, it's actually kind of a cool group, but it's the Shared Use Mobility Center. And it's a website that um, nationally sort of compiles like policies and ordinances around ride sharing and bike sharing. And I mean, all sorts of different, like what are other cities doing to try and develop some new ways to, to provide transportation um, and talked with them and they, Honestly, especially because I mentioned the Joint Dispatch Center um, as, as a highlight of something that, you know, has taken a lot of effort on your guys' part to develop, but that especially within looking for funding sources, that that Joint Dispatch Center, especially potentially in connection with new technologies, could be a very really useful tool um, to sort of highlight why we would be a good fit to receive funding versus another community, um, knowing that we're always sort of find, fighting for funding from somebody else. So my, my hope, it's going to be interesting to try and tie in Teller and El Paso together, considering the structures are so different. Um, so I definitely would like to make sure that, that you guys are well connected and, and making sure that, yeah, those needs are being addressed and heard. But more just an update, and Jessica, I don't know if you have more to add. Um, I'll keep you updated as far as how this first hearing goes on Thursday, but it's kind of where we're at. It, is, I haven't had a chance to read the bill yet. Is yeah. the focus more towards the delivery, technological use of del right delivery or scheduling or everything? Pretty much or everything. Disease. Yeah. Disease. Um, and I actually, I've got a few copies of the bill here. Um, so some of the things they're looking at, uh, let's see, there's some set of numbers. Let's see, determine the availability of technology and transportation options, demonstrate the specific transportation needs in urban and rural areas, explore technological and transportation business solutions, determine existing funding sources, if any. Um, so kind of a pretty broad, broad expanse. So it's sort of a big call that I think if we want it to be effective, we're going to have to put a good amount of work into because I would hate to I would hate for this committee to come forward with recommendations that aren't reflective of what we really need. So that means we sort of have to let them know what we really need. So I have a question. Uh, do they have a sponsor in the House? Yes. Um, so it's Lambert in the Senate and Lawrence, Hamner, Rankin, and Young in the House. So they have three sponsors in the House? Then? Uh, four in, yes, four in the House and two in the Senate, Lambert and Lundberg. Okay. Okay. That's good. At least currently, and it, it hasn't gone through first reading yet, so we might add a bunch of people on as they hear about it. But a step forward, I think, at least to acknowledge that there, that our legislators acknowledge that there are some needs that aren't currently being met. Will we be having people um, go down to testify? I, I would surely hope so. Um, this first time around, uh, I know Patricia, just because she, um, has been working with Senator Lambert on this, got called in. But I think if, if you're interested, if you want to, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of just disseminating information as I get right. it. <laughs> no, I but happily, that. like, if, if there is a place where I can pull people in, I think 
we should be there. Definitely. I think we need to be at the table. Um, as I understand, it, there's. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can go for it. <laughs> um, as I understand, it, there's um, someone in um, Nebraska that is starting up a nationwide um, company that is uh, based on some of the Uber and Lyft model, mm -hmm. and she has received a lot of VC money and um, is very innovative, and I believe she is. Uh, or some of her people are responsible for working with Lambert and to look at these various um, technologies so to expand really what's going on in a more rural mm -hmm. uh, setting mm -hmm. was her focus. Right, right. Um, I've met with her personally um, a couple times and I think she's very innovative but I think she's behind some of this stuff that's going on with uh, Lambert right. um, and she's very well funded and well connected which is kind of interesting to see how um, that would work out um, and what that might mean to us. I'm not quite sure, but it's, she's very, um, I think most importantly, it would it affect the more rural areas of our, um, of our foot, of the PPACG footprint. Um, very, really innovative. So, and, and I'm sorry, so, so Jacob. Yeah. So I have a question on that. So since you said they're not actually putting a, um, a funding allotment for this, they're just kind of out there. Who, I mean, it's probably those nine that are kind of in charge of it. Like, how are they pushing this forward if there's no money attached to it? Do you, do you know that? How are they pushing how are they able to How are they able to actually go out there and do what they want to do with the pilot program without any money? Are they kind of leveraging us and then other folks in the community pretty much? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yep, yeah. Go and the one thing that I would add, um, this is going to move very quickly. The pilot program must be completed by December 1st of 2017 so that the report the results from it can be turned in. When I read that. So they're going to be hitting mm -hmm. people for money here. quickly for grants and donations and trying to run this as quickly as possible once it, the bill is passed. And if I, the bill is passed. And I heard, like, the firm's name is Liberty and I think, uh, as I said, they have some great funding from the <coughs> PCs and um, they want to they tweak that those transportation network company, you know, um, legislative um, view um, and statutory. So I think that's where it's going to be manipulated um, mm -hmm. and looking for a result. And traditionally, what, it, what I've seen, um, Jacob, is um, so the legislator decides something, then they push it out to the different state committees to work on it, and then they have to come back with a report, you know, in the summer, and then they have to do things. And, but, you know, there's, it's, it's very interesting how things get done. It's a long time, and I would appreciate your comment because you, you're probably more familiar with this process than any of us. Well, I think it's going to be super valuable for Patricia to be there for this first one, um, but I think we'll need other people for support in later hearings more than anything else. The, the first hearing tends to be a fairly polite, easygoing, and it's later ones where people are like, well, why should we do this? Um, because, because this does come with no fiscal note now, but has an expected fiscal note for the next year, mm -hmm. there may be opposition based on that. And that's going to be something where we, that has to be addressed. So I'll be happy to work with, you know, her name is Valerie with the company and to see what we can do. Because I think it really would impact our more rural partners in this organization, yeah. how that's going to work. And, um, and frankly, I think um, transportation has been a very state and um, industry, um, but I think in the last two to three years, it has just you know, been flipped over and now we're trying to figure out how to catch up with the expectation of it, I want to get a ride within 20 minutes. You know, how do these old legacy systems adapt to that? And, you know, even from a, you know, a kind of an look have a more demand response to a goodwill that has things scheduled. Um, and in fact, I've had some comments from um, special kids, special families, and how they need more support getting people from the various schools into their programs in the afternoon. Um, so I met with her a couple um, weeks or months ago, and you know, how could we support that? And I said I'd bring it to the um, committee here and see. It, it is all about funding and who's you know going to supply the money for those rides. And of course, we could always ask the city. Um, because this would be city, you know, related more specifically to special kids, special families. But, um, you know, there is that pool of money within the RTA 
that you know, if we were to ask the members of the board to release those funds, we might be able to do a few things too that are a little more innovative on a local level. Well, and keeping that in mind, um, there's the FTA has those the mobility on demand sandbox grants, and it's mm -hmm. always focused on you know highly technologically innovative. But just sort of brought that up with the shared use mobility center, and they're like your joint joint dispatch setup really highlights your capacity to potentially to, to at least have a better chance of getting a sandbox grant if we were able to form it within the framework of we did this huge needs assessment and we're building up this program and we just need you know we'd love to provide a 20 percent match with our rta money and <laughs> whatever we'll figure it out but anyway that's that's another option to look at as far as it'd be i mean it's tough it's, it's fta money but um I feel like the tie with what those those grants are intended for is pretty much directly on point, especially identifying that rural versus urban, because almost all of them have gone to urban areas. So, <coughs> lots of ideas. We'll keep you updated. I have another question, kind of on a legislative point of view. So, um, um, in the press, um, both federally and state, um, there's been more interest in infrastructure and transportation, and um, I guess it was even in Sunday's paper, you know, what about transportation and what about the roads and um, how are we planning, you know, PPACG and I guess, you know, Rocky, Scott with the Transportation Committee and then the, the committee that Norm Steen is on is that the stack. You know, how are we um, speaking into um, not only infrastructure for roads and bridges, but what about transportation? So do, uh, where are we on that? Are any comments on that? Anybody? Um, I, I, it seem, it that? seems to me when they talk about transportation at either the federal or state level, they are talking specifically about roads because they have limited consciousness about alternative means of transportation that will be more effective in the long run. And I'll, I'll chime in that, so for example, everybody is using the phrase widening I-25 between Monument mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Castle Rock. Mm -hmm. What that actually is, is the Priority Environmental Linkages Study, right. the EL study, right. has a meeting tonight at Library 21C. They're going to be looking at what actually needs to be done. Do we need a widened lane? Do we need a toll lane? Do we need a HOV lane? Do we need a light rail? Do we need a train? They're going to be looking at all of the possible alternatives that anybody suggests. So if people go to those CDOT meetings and say, hey, make sure you're considering these aspects of it. You know, hey, maybe transportation should be more important than infrastructure in addressing this issue. Um, and that is one of the things they are supposed to be looking at. Um, but that if people do not speak up, they may not. Um, I was also contacted by... Um one of the co-executive directors at CASTA to um, speak with, um, I think it's Senator Grantham. So what, I'm not sure what his footprint is. He's president of the Senate. <laughs> so uh, I thought he was Canyon City. He is. Uh, what they did is they restructured the whole thing. He has at least five counties. Oh. <coughs> at least he is in five counties. So. So, like, where I live, I'm in Fountain. He's, he has Fountain. My back fence is county, Whitefield Security. So if I live directly across the street, I would, I would be uh, in a different Senate district. And that is, that is the way they did it. His, his district is the craziest thing you've ever seen. And he would admit Did we say gerrymandering? No. <laughs> but yeah, but he, he, is, he, has, he has Fountain, but he does not have Whitefield security. So, uh, like I say, if right my fence, if I were across this four-lane road, I would be in a different Senate district. He has Senate 2, I think it is. So what is his position on some of this transit and transportation? I don't know, but I, I will do my best to find out. So I wouldn't mind talking with you since they've asked me to speak with him. I, I don't know what his positions are. And, and you know, I, said, I, mean, no I can tell you this much. He's very popular among his constituents. Because, and he's very understanding, so I think, he, and where he's president of the Senate, we've got a lot of, he's, he's very important there. 
So well, yeah. and so is Senator Lambert with the Joint Budget Committee. Yes, he is. Yeah. Well, see, he came off the JBC. I don't know if he's still on it, but he was on the JBC. Yes, he was. Grantham was on. So, yeah. You're absolutely right. So I'm just trying to, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I said I would speak to him in regards to um, a more transit-focused, um, you know, Opinion on you know where some of the funding goes, but I I'll maybe you and I can talk later. Sure, um, yeah, about you bet. Uh -huh. What we could say together? Yes, I just <laughs> up and listed you. Thanks. Sure, <laughs> you bet. Um, anything else about training, information sharing, coordination opportunities? I, I have a question, probably for Jessica. Is that meeting tonight at Twenty One C? Is that to talk about the entire I Twenty Five corridor, or is that just the gap? Um, it is just to talk about the GAP yeah. PEL study, um, and it's from 5 to 7 tonight at <coughs> see in the upstairs venue room. Some other meetings later in the week or next week, There's too. one in Castle Rock on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Castle Rock. So, but the Colorado Springs one is, is tonight. Framework for Action, and thank you, Bethany, for sending um, it out. That's some hard copy. You'll have enough for everyone. Thanks for that. Do you want to lead it? No. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but do you guys want to just go through it as a group? Like each question, we'll just kind of get a consensus about where we are. Um, right. Just I just want to say, so this is um, a national framework for actions to understand, you know, your mobility and transit needs within a community. The first group looks at your individual assessment, then you're looking, you know, um, and then it goes into community and... and, and so let's just kind of start and see where we end up. Um, yeah. But I would hope that um, as an end result of this, that we come up with um, kind of a map for what we want to do here in this group for 2017. And like where we're at in terms yeah. of, yeah. Um, so the first question is, have leaders and organizations defined the need for change and articulated a new vision for the delivery of coordinated transportation services? Do we need to begin this effort? Do we need significant action, just action, or are we doing it well? Well, and I like their um, decision helpers to help you frame what right. it looks like. Um, because, you know, leaders in human service agencies and public transportation have acknowledged that the existing network of transportation services is not sufficiently efficient, cost-effective, or flexible to meet the mobility needs. A clear and inspiring mission for improving service and resource management, and that the vision drives planning and action. Wow. So as a consensus, where do people think we are on um, if we have articulated a new vision for the delivery of coordinated service? I would say needs action. Uh, it's like, no, I think while we may well acknowledge that there are problems with our transportation. I don't think we have a clear vision of where we're going to solve that situation. So we're kind of in the middle. I had needs action as well, sort of the same thing that 
I think we've acknowledged we're not, you know, we're not where we want to be, but I don't know that we have, and I think I like the word inspiring vision statement. I, I think we've got our long-term plan and that's very, it is what it is, but I, I would love to really see that nailed down into something that people get excited about versus just, yeah, in 30 years it'll look pretty similar to what it does now. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Deliver me. I'm kind of curious when people in the um, Joint Dispatch and Call Center what we think, because I think that has been a bit um, held up as an example of what we're trying to do. But I don't see Pat just walked in and not heard it. So I'm feeling very disjointed. <laughs> Hi, good to see you again. Welcome. Welcome. So we're going over this framework that's that national framework and um, trying to make an assessment for ourselves so that then we can understand where we think we are and then where we want to go. But um, I believe also so that it needs action. Needs action. Okay. Do we have a consensus on this, this answer? Um, and then, so Bethany, will you be able to kind of summarize for us what, what we're deciding? Yeah. I'm kind of taking notes, and then I'll send that out. Maybe the next time we can kind of start looking at where we have come. Okay, so the second question is governing framework in a place that brings together providers, agencies, and consumers. Are there clear guidelines that all embrace? Do we need to begin this significant action, action, or is it being done well? I think, you know, they're, I like, as I said, I really do like their decision helpers because it helps. Like, so what it doesn't look like is, yeah. you know, so, you know, decision-making bodies, it's just a coalition, and I think that that could be us, right? It's pretty good. I've got a copy of the bylaws if anybody wants to get refreshed. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we kind of exist. Um, so we include public and private providers and human service agencies. Um, not so much the health providers. Um, Employment providers, DVR, that's good, thank you. Um, and consumers, occasionally we have consumers here. Um, yeah, well, next bullet point. The shared decision-making group communicates effectively with those not at the table. That may be an area of a, a bit of weakness. Yeah. We meet regularly. Mm -hmm. But we haven't, we've never really established strategic or measurable goals, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need some action. Okay. Maybe you need significant action. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like we're far better along than a lot of places with this, but yeah, I know it's actually, I mean, I mean, that's just my feeling. Like the fact that we're here monthly and meeting regularly and have expectations to a certain extent of, of what we want from each other, whether it's super formal. I think we're going to find that we need some action in all of these, and it's more just where you're, where you're falling on the scale of how much action you think action needs. So do you think then on any of them will fall into these categories of needs to begin or needs significant action, or are we all kind of feeling that we're just in the middle with the entire? I think it's still a good exercise. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, okay. So, are we on need action then for number two? I think we need significant action. Okay. On oh, number two? Yeah, because I, I think, mm. you know, um, you go ahead and argue with me. I, I mean, I'm not married to my. my... No, I, I, could, I was just thinking that it was only a little bit weak, uh, so that's why this book needs action as opposed to significant action. Using the first one as our benchmark. Okay. All right. Needs action. So I'm sorry, was that need significant action? No, everyone needs action. Okay. Significant is too strong a word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Number three, does the governing framework cover the entire community and maintain strong relationships with neighboring communities and state agencies? Are you part of our entire community? 
so I think we're here. <laughs> I, I would, this is more significant action for me. I think we've got the first one, we've got a decision making body, but I don't know that we've necessarily used our, our resources here collectively to build relationships or necessarily impact policy. I agree. I think we could do some significant outreaching to really make it much more regional. <clears throat> well, and I am encouraged today, though, that, you know, and, and thank you, Courtney, for bringing up, you know, what are some legislative bills and what does that mean to us and how can we, you know, move our agenda um, in a forward that meets the states, you know, what they're doing statewide. So, Significant action. Okay. <laughs> On the road. Yeah, exactly. So it's a two plus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, number four is there sustained support for coordinated transportation planning among elected officials, agency administrators, and other community leaders? about transportation being integrated into community initiatives is something I talk about all the time and that we have a long way to go that we you know we'll build new hospitals out in the middle of nowhere but not have any idea about how to provide service to them in a way that fits. so this was a need significant action for me. The focus seems to be on concrete rather than wheels and I just got hung up on uh, coordination, incentives, budget, regularly increasing, of course not. That, uh, yeah. you, we're, we're up against it there. Uh, and, I, and I chuckle because that seems like a, uh, not funny ha-ha, but funny oh my. Because that's a tough one. That's a tough battle. Um, right. You can say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck with need significant action. I uh, uh, might even begin with this group, but it, uh, uh, you might have to enlist. <coughs> I was thinking of uh, Warren Zevon, just give me some lawyers, guns, and money, and let you go at it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, need uh, significant action. Right. I think when I look at the last bullet under number four, I think we've got a lot of resources in the community, but we can't put them on the road because we don't have enough expansion of dollars to pay for the rides. So I always look at, like, Goodwill has vehicles, you know, and we've talked about how could they have them on the road, community intersections, but how do they pay for the rides? So I think we've got potential for specialized transportation with all of the providers, but the implementation is where the budget the supports not that. Agreed. As a community, we got vehicles out the wazoo, and if we don't have drivers, we can get them. But it costs money to roll those vehicles, and the drivers must be paid, and that's in some cases, many, in fact, in many cases, what we're lacking. So I would say something. Okay. Um, so number five, is there positive momentum? Is there growing interest and commitment to coordinating human service transportation trips and maximizing resources? Well, when it talks about participation and budget support for coordination initiatives are regularly increasing, 
I don't think that's a true statement. <laughs> it has been remained flat for over five years. Rather than us being able to get input to, we respond to. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we know what the pot of money is and we apply for it. We can't really influence the increase, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm There's a pot of money and it is what it is. I think there's significant progress in some of those areas. That second bullet just <coughs> points directly to the call center. So I think, I, I guess my, my impression would be that it's a needs action. There's a, there's a foundation there, but it needs got ways to go. It's definitely not a building of the rate we would like to do. <coughs> Anybody else? Got nothing yet. <laughs> I know. It's a new year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new year. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess are we having a consensus that it needs action and that um, maybe it would be the first bullet that we would say it needs more action on, significant action, but the other two bullets, it needs, you know, we are gaining momentum. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It needs action. Okay. So, to the evaluation portion, so after we've reviewed each of the questions, what is our overall evaluation of kind of where we're at? Probably in the needs action generally, kind of in the middle. So, I mean, I did count up, so we had three needs action and then and two, two needs significant. action. Um, so do you think after we do this exercise that then we would then articulate or talk, discuss what, what we can do to, doing? yeah. So we're in the needs action for this evaluation. Okay. In this section, do you want to write maybe some ideas? Really or do we want to do that separately? of what we can do or what we can start doing. Just like some preliminary goals that we can kind of use to direct. So it's not just. Maybe if we get through the assessment, fully, okay. just we get some context. I'm not quite sure what might fall here or what might come in later mm -hmm. sections. Okay. Maybe just identifying the bullet points that are outstanding is going to be good place to start. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, is there an inventory inventory of community transportation resources and programs that fund transportation services? I think you had the mobility guide that Angel put together, right? So that would be a inventory and programs that fund transportation. There was a great chart three years ago from CDOT about all the places you could find them. Hmm. That inventory should be in CDOT. Everybody should have that loaded into CDOT. Or in, in, in some type of the Mountain Metro would have some type of federally based program that would have its inventory. As well as all the programs that have ever been applied for through any FTA grants or CDOT grants or uh, local and federal grants. So all this, all this material is available to us right here. This is question six. And coordination plan would have it too. So, but I'm just curious, so um, am I allowed to go into the co-trams and just pull out, you know, regionally what's in the inventory? I don't know. You, I, don't you, know. I think in co-trams, Gail, you're only going to be able to see what you what have. Can you, you can't see what I have. So could I ask them to see that? people to maybe print a report for what's available in the community that I'm sure has they state would. and federal interest in it? Because they're doing yeah. an asset management right now. They yeah, they're pushing on that right now. So, so everybody has to submit their asset management to CDOT um, if you haven't already. I know they're requesting it. So off of that statewide asset management plan should show the inventory. Is that, did I say that correctly? 
Also, in your your last human services and public transportation coordination plan, that's going to have your inventory. I'm not sure when that was done for for this this region. Maybe 2040 plan, did we? And then we had. Um, I think it got finalized last year, like mid last year. Your inventory also should be reflected in your uh, five year, five to ten year replacement plan. All, the, all that information should be in graph form or some type. It'll be easy. But I'm not sure those are shared readily. I mean, I, I agree. I think we all. No, I, 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 if, if, if you ask for them, people would provide them. I think it's, so, so the yeah, material, yeah. the information is here. So, but what about the people that are not at the table or that don't receive state or federal funds? Do we care? Well, they're still generally listed in a coordination plan because yeah. it takes an inventory to private provide. Basically, anything that the consultants can find will be in that plan. So, again, I'm not sure who did the last one or when it was done, but you know, all of your inventory up to that point. Doesn't give you all the different funding sources, but there's several that actually are included in Appendix C of the. 2040 plan. Impressive, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Former planner. <laughs> <laughs> what? Thank it, you. It gets you one, two, I don't know about a dozen, maybe a little less than a dozen. Not sure if you qualify for all of them, but there's a page and a half of them. So, in, and is Yellow Cab included in this? It doesn't have, this is in the inventory. I'm just looking at the funding sources. Okay. There might be an inventory in here somewhere. But. Do you feel comfortable in saying that it's done well enough? I don't think we're going to find anywhere it's perfect, but I feel like of all the things we prioritize, I don't know that this is on my radar. Just so we can. I'm just curious if churches and schools are involved in Yeah, and I'm just, you know, if a taxi is yellow, I mean, because yeah. you, have a, you have a footprint. You're, you're significant but, in the coordination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but taxis are mentioned in most plans, and so uh, we're definitely included, uh, and we definitely participate, so you don't feel left out. Uh, but but uh, churches and schools, that's, uh, some of those are tougher to capture. I, I some are doing their own thing. Some are uh, uh, probably may even be providing a big service we don't know about. I'm uh, not even sure how we capture it. Yeah. I'm kind of reading that not only to be an inventory of vehicles, but also programs. Yeah, sir, sir, services. I was reading yeah. services too. You got a few in here as well. <laughs> <laughs> not not all of them, I'm assuming, but they're. A little less than a dozen or so. Okay. So, is there a consensus that we're mostly doing this well? Or? Well, I, I kind of like your. Is it done well enough? Okay. Yeah. If we're aiming for perfection, we can put a needs action pretty easily on <laughs> anything that we're somewhat confident in. I, right. I, I, I like done well. I, the. Uh, you know, in the concept of government, which which this is, uh, it may not be the world's finest, but there's a number you can call to yeah. find out about transportation services in general and what be, what might be available depending on what your needs are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, who the providers are. Uh, I don't apply for federal funds, but I know generally that those lists are around, and I think you can probably get them. It, it may not be easy, but in, but within the realm of government, not bad. Not bad. And in the scheme of things, for this assessment, maybe it'll help that we don't have to focus as much on this aspect if we... Done well. Okay. <laughs> Done well enough. Okay. okay. Is there a process for identifying duplication of services, underused assets, and service gaps? Yeah. yeah, so I, I think that that probably is covered under 
the call center of you guys communicating and whoever's a part of that. Yeah. Here was the basis for the call center, <coughs> the whole project starting some what, 10 years ago now. Not to say things move slowly. <laughs> so I do, I mean, I think it, I would put it as a needs action because we've got the framework, but part of this is that the data has been analyzed and collected and shared. And, and that's so, a big part of this first year. We're going to be doing a lot of data analysis. So, so yeah, I'd say we're on the right track, but still along the action kind of things. So, so as you guys are going through this, to me it looks like basically a blueprint on how to do a human services coordination and public transportation coordination plan. So. If you have that document and you're going through this as you go through this, you'll have better information to answer the question. So um, keep that in mind. But it looks to me like this is just how you put a coordination plan together. Um, all the steps are in there. All the pieces are in there. It's the same thing you would see in your document if you had it in front of you. I think, I think maybe for me it's, it's so that the coordination plan gets updated, what, every three or four years? So those, those interim things can be hard. I mean, and especially if we have the data, I'd like it to be analyzed and used in the meantime. Although I do think you're right, like a lot of this is in that, that long-term plan. But um, yeah, I, I still think it needs action, but we're in the right direction. But yeah, the, that long-range plan ties in a lot. Well, it's a, it's a five-year plan, and it's updated every five years. And generally, the mobility manager for the region executes mm -hmm. and keeps everyone up to the plan. So, I don't know if you guys are duplicating effort with this, but if it's a five-year plan, there would be steps for years one, two, three, three, and so on and so forth. And, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I thank you for your comment. I think, to me, I understood this better than when I read the 2040 plan. Okay. So I think you're right, maybe mapping them together and kind of going where we are. But I, I like these bullets, because I understand the bullets. Gotcha. Um, because the document of 24 is a very formal document, um, and it probably doesn't like to. But I think it's, it's not, it's not it the 2040 together. plan. It would be your five-year human services and public transportation coordination plan. That would be the plan that blueprints what your mobility management efforts are going to be over the next five years. And it's required by the feds every five years since 2000. Required by the feds. Teller County just we just did ours yesterday. We just sat down and did a big round table with all of ours and, and looked at our windows and gates and what are we hitting? Are we early? Are we late? So on and so forth. Out? So it's well, great you can lead our group here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard. Transit consultant. Is it a transit consultant? <laughs> so do we have anything like that? No, that's what I'm saying. Do we have one? I don't no. think so we were yeah, required to have one? <laughs> is that from the 53 and 5311 funding sources? Is that kind of what the requirement comes from? The 53, uh, is that what's requiring it? It's an FTA requirement, yeah. Because I think if it's a 5310, 5311, I would think this satisfies it. Because I do, I do see that for Illinois, and this is a much larger version of what I did there. It's a very similar look, though, and that's what we did that for. Um, but I don't know. I haven't looked at this plan in any depth, but. The look that what I have given it, it looks like it would meet that requirement of coordination to get the 53, where it has to be um, uh, included in a locally developed coordinated plan. Um, that, I want to say that's what this would satisfy, but I don't know. I didn't work on this. Probably would because it's a broader document, but most communities, you know, like governing bodies have a five-year plan that's been updated in like 2013. A lot of update, updates are going to come up again in 2018. So. Probably if we Google it, we could probably find one. There has to be one somewhere. I'll search. Okay. <laughs> and one of the things that complicates the fact that we don't have it. Okay. Right, right. That's kind of like. Hmm. Well, maybe that means uh, significant <laughs> action needs to begin. <laughs> it's getting put back in our corner. Oh, good. <laughs> we got the box last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm noting that so we have an action item to identify what that plan is. And, um, so on number seven, are we saying that we um, need significant action? If we can't identify a plan that we're supposed to have, I think that's... Thanks, Joe, for taking that on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you be able to share your plan with us maybe the next time? 
Um, absolutely. As a matter of fact, you can access it right now. You just go to our website, and it's in a PDF format. You just click on it for Teller County, and it'll download the efforts of Teller County. And then as far as Cripple Creek, it's it's on there as well. You can download it, print it, do whatever you guys want to do. Nice. Thank you. So that might be, could be a good template for you yeah. guys for... Yeah. Okay, I'll include that in next well, month's packet. Ask, ask guys, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> ask, I'm part of that, too. I got two. Yeah, yeah. I got to tell her I know pencils. Sorry, Gil. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, is there a process for... Ide oh, no, sorry. Are the specific transportation needs of various target populations well documented? This is as needing significant action. I think we have some informal information and data as far as needs for individuals with disabilities and older adults. But the, the next three points as far as talking to people that don't currently need and use transit and getting that input and feedback um, from the broader community that's not directly impacted, I don't think we're doing really any of well, I'm kind of curious also about the, um, the low income. And DHS sometimes to come to these meetings and have they been here recently? Oh. And I think, you know, that is a segment of our county um, that needs some services and support, and we don't hear from them often enough. Um, I, I don't believe anyway. And that, um, and then I'm just kind of curious, what's, there's in the newspaper, there's always a half-page ad about against DHS. Anyone familiar with that? I mean, I'm like, what's going on over here? Okay, because it talks about, you know, breaking up families and this, and I'm like, wow, what's up? And then I'm like, I never see him anymore, so I'm like, <laughs> all right. The new head of it has just come down. Okay. Anything else you want to contribute on that? It would be appreciated, because I think that is our low income in DHS, and I'm not sure where we are on that. I'm not going to keep bringing this up, but it's also kind of in this document as well, some of those issues okay. that are um, listed in there. I would say it probably still needs action because it's just like a paragraph on you know, each of the different like, kind of subgroups. But you have populations, low income, senior, employment, uh, travel patterns, themes, recommendations. I mean, it's there, but I think it could use some work from this standpoint. Okay. I thought that's why I reinvent the wheel. We already have something that's kind of there. I, I just know that I think from a low income we need significant action, but if that's just one, one set, a smaller set of the entire population for transit needs, I'm okay with needs action. Anybody else? So, so what kind of data we have on seniors seems to me, just things I do, that there are a lot of hidden needs out there, particularly among seniors. They may not be identified or may not wish to be identified as this, say, have a new disability, but in fact they do. Uh, I think that's a, a segment of the population we're kind of missing, and that's going to grow larger in the future. Well, and I think, again, that first point we're doing pretty okay on. We've got some good data from different sources about what current needs are, but as far as talking to... Uh, characteristics that make transit an attractive choice for non-users, major health and human service agencies asking about what would motivate their clients to use transit. Mm -hmm. The data has been analyzed and we use it to drive our coordination process. I don't think we're there. I think we've got some good base data for sure, first bullet, but I would, it's a need significant action from my perspective. And I think as individual agencies, we might all have our own pot of data, but we're really not sharing it. Sharing it. I'm calling on significant action just because DHS and you know, some other. Mm -hmm. I would go with that. I mean, in, 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 um, I think we can use <coughs> what Jacob is, you know, as a starting point to build from. Yeah, because I 
So not, the blank page is bad. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, has the use of technology in the transportation system been assessed to determine whether investment in transportation technology may improve services and or reduce costs? Curious about MMT and some of the billing. Are you guys able to take, you know, the credit cards and how, how can we start using that kind of? Are, are, how are you using those kinds of um, non-cash handling transactions? It kind of goes through our trap. Well, it does go through our trapeze system, which kind of buddies off of the the city website. So you go on to you log in and you can basically put money in there via credit card. I mean, the other thing we can also put online accounts via like a check sent into Metro Mobility, but right now, I mean, it's pretty basic with the website. Um, just going on there, and you can click how many rides you want to add or how many. I think it's rides and dollars. It's kind of your choice if you want to put a money amount or a number of rides you can do. You can go both those ways with it. And, Gail, there is a, I think it's, yeah, it's number 18, but it's a specific question about is there a seamless payment system? Okay. So maybe this Wait, one okay. could be about... It's more about the technology versus the technology. Okay, so. So, Ralph, you want to weigh in on um, have you done any survey and research data because I guided decision making? Were you part of that TSD thing or whatever? Um, not really. I think I came in on the back end. It so, seems like from, from that group, though, that the technology piece and, you know, the end result on this, the last slide, you're heading towards a one call, one click. So I think the technology piece is well taken care of. Okay. Okay. So, done well. Okay. Enough. <laughs> okay. Are transportation line items included in the annual budgets for all human service programs that provide transportation services? Okay. Okay. But is that in the DHS budget? I mean, I've never seen the DHS budget. Wow. Good question. Do they provide transportation services? They reimburse. They do. Mm -hmm. Not in yeah. I guess that's the definition of how you define provide. Why would they put they it in their? <laughs> why would they put that in their budget under? The, are you talking about the H? CBS waiver on the reimbursement through. Right, right. Or even just. But what, I don't understand why we put that in the budget, where they would put that in their budget when it's just going from the state to them, to the client. So I don't know if that's. It, it would be in their budget somehow. I'm just, I've just never seen it. So I, I'll, I'll ask, because obviously I have an interest. So I'll, um, but I'll figure out who I'm asking. <laughs> okay. So consensus done well. Um, have transportation users and other stakeholders participated in the community transportation assessment process? I think this group and usually the stakeholder groups with the long range plan, we've got mm -hmm. the pa transit passenger advisory committee, we've got, we've got a lot of committees. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think I think you can always do better in this, honestly, but I think we're doing, like, I, I would put in a needs action, but not. And there are public meetings and different organizations that don't focus on this. Okay. I don't think you've done well, but I know it's not that well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, is there a strategic plan with a clear mission and goals? Are the assessment results used to develop? a set of realistic actions that improve coordination. I don't know where this is. <laughs> I might put that in a need significant. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> or potentially needs to begin. Hopefully right. it exists somewhere. CDOT should have a copy of that. Yeah. 
back there. So if you were to get with Jeff Sanders or somebody back there and ask them when's the last time that this area had a five-year strategic plan executed, because you have to provide each stage of that document to them up and on, upon completion of you finish it then with the final document. So if it can't locate it here, that's a great place to start. Could you say the name again? Yes. Jeff Sanders. The, Jeff took over for David Abriel, and David was the one that was in charge of the five-year development studies at 5304 and so on and so forth. So I, I think it, that would be where you would probably find your answer. Okay. Is clear data systematically gathered on core performance issues such as cost per delivery trip, ridership, and on-time performance? Is the data systematically analyzed to determine how costs can be lowered and performance improved? Hmm. Hmm. Well, we provide all that information to the funders. Yeah. I would say yes, having worked with all four of the providers in that study back in 2013, all that, all the providers had that data. So um, I'm guessing the management will react to it when they get it. So it's really pretty solid. Okay. So. I mean, I never hear from MMT. She's gone. But, oh. you know, what, when we provide all this information to them, you know, I, I never hear back about, well, that's a good job, are you doing this? Or, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. kind of curious that, um, so it's not a, a, it's just a one-way communication of our costs and not a, an analysis or a, sure. where do we improve it. I'm talking about MMT when we provide this information. We really don't discuss with you uh, um, at a peer level about, well, what does it look like, and how can we lower costs? I think it could also be a tool in here. Right. It could be a learning of different things that different groups do. do. Um, so I think we gather it and provide it to funders, but I don't know that we use it. Right. Needs action. Needs action. Yeah. At least you're already gathering it. Right. So gather it. I mean, we all have it. Okay. Um, is the plan for oh, sorry? Is the plan for human services transportation coordination linked to and supported by other state and local plans, such as the regional transportation plan or state transportation improvement plan? Okay. Um, is data being collected on the benefits of coordination? Are the results communicated strategically? bullet points where I'm confident yeah. we're doing them well, yeah. or if at all. Right, yeah, there's no kind of an impact of economic and quality of life benefits. It's really hard to, that's a level of, of um, data collection or uh, evaluation that we haven't done, yeah. or done well, or even communicated. So, need significant action? Yeah. yeah. How much is this being involved with the call center, though? So documented and communicated um, that this information that we have or track that is one thing, but yeah, I, I think I think it's there. Again, we've got some basis, but we've got there's a good amount of work to do to actually take that information and communicate it well. It's not I read the top two bullet points and I started reading down. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So what's our, our count on this section? I'm kind of curious of our done well enough and done. I think it's, it's pretty one-way street. Like right now, so I don't know if it's like quite a bit of work. Don't so much better in this section than the other one. Because <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple of done I think it might be helpful to see what's actually in the 2040 year and see how it applies. We did. <laughs> Well, I, and I, yeah. So maybe next meeting we should go over the 2040. Yeah. Sure. Nobody signed up in March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have four done well, I think, and three need significant action. 
so we're going to be done well. Um, okay. Does the transportation system have an array of user-friendly and accessible information sources? <laughs> I think we've got the one stop, you know, we've got the call center started, but that's the... the calls are from directly to us. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no mobility manager. No. <laughs> no mobility manager. I would say that I, I hear a lot about people not being quite sure where to go to right. find information, so I don't know that it's... It's out there. It's just not necessarily well collected. So maybe it's not significant action. Huh? So it's just not communicated effectively. There's, there's a one caller, not a one click yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think this is also really kind of typical of what all of us say as agencies. People don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. Another thing with, with seniors, because um, I've talked to several just recently, but what they want, they can figure out how to get, you know, to medical and all that. That, to me, that was not a thing for them. They, want, they don't want their lifestyle changed. And when they decide maybe like to give up driving or something. Um, and I, I have, I know a couple people have kind of gone through it. One of them has it figured out. She lives a mile from a bus stop, lives up Shine Canyon. She walks down and catches the bus. She may have to be there a few hours early. She does it. And I said, what about bad weather? She looked at me like, are you nuts? I'm still going in bad weather. I'll walk the mile in bad weather. And she has the bus system figured out, wow. Wow. <coughs> Just to get that help, I think that's real important. Okay. So do we, yeah, number so, yeah. Um, Are travel, training, and consumer education programs available on an ongoing basis? So we, have a, we have a program with our certification as well as several, some of the table here of the communities act, or groups actually get uh, travel training passes from us. The ambassador uh, program. Ambassador program. Okay, so done well. I, I still think there's more that needs yeah. to be done. Okay. I think exactly. actually asked actual consumers whether they felt comfortable with this mm -hmm. versus people that get to sit around a table and all of it. We'd probably get a different right. response. I think definitely needs it. Okay, needs action. Okay. Uh, this guy's next month, I'm sorry. Is there a seamless payment system that supports user-friendly services and promotes customer choices of the most cost-effective service? No. no. <laughs> so it needs we to begin. begin. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and frankly, I mean, I, I do would, I would be looking to MMT. I think a year ago when we asked this question, um, I forget whether Craig or Lance, you know, you guys are still beginning to implement you know, some problems and things like that. So um, I was, I just me personally was waiting for the leadership of MMT to say what that looks like and, and how we might be able to integrate it within our own route map systems. That would require the brokerage model pretty much to be up and running, not just the separate entities doing their thing, but having that other layer up here of kind of like pushing the rides down because 
that's my that's my best guess at that is to where that would I mean, that, that is where that would filter in. There's no doubt about that. But I'm guessing that's what they would probably want to wait for before any of that would go on. Part of the challenge with that though is we're looking at it from a metro perspective, and I have a one of my largest funder I cannot charge. So I, I've asked that question related to the joint dispatch call center or a brokerage model. What happens? I'm not willing to lose my biggest chunk of transportation funding because of charging. I can't do that. So for me, this is a huge one. Right now, is I send letters out to all my transportation lenders, which is really expensive. I send a statement on every month. Mm -hmm. One asking for donations, the other asking for payments, depending who funded the ride. I mean, it is a problem when yes. we have mixed funding. It's a real serious problem, and I don't know how we address it. Since you're the one that won't let me charge, would you like to address it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a federal. Right, it's a budget And I just think from a perspective of the AMBICAP, where you know we'd have that city contract and the audit, you know, we're a little different from Silverkey the way you um, adjusted the, their contract for them. But I have to prove that I charge three fifty for every one of those people, and. Um, that cash handling procedure within, you know, uh, a driver, um, as well as a front office person, and invoices set up um, is very. Um, there's a lot of administrative overhead, and I would really prefer to have just a bank account where they can, we can just decrement um, those monies. And so, you know, from a slightly different perspective, it is a major issue for me. It takes up a lot of time to spend um, collecting these monies, and I'm held to that standard from. The is that a policy issue, or is it something that can be addressed technologically? Um, I believe we would have to look at the billing module more within route match, and then I would have to have some kind of setup where we can um, create and hold monies for people. And that, you know, yeah, I, you know. I'm, so I'm about I, my understanding I of route match at this point, so. Uh, well, no, but, I mean, <coughs> route match has a. Right. They do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, and so and that's why I was looking towards you know, MMT, you know, because you were the ones that implementing it and had a larger user base that you would be encountering all the kind of weird issues that come up, because I know there have been several, you know, and then you would be able to lead the group as to what that looks like. But that would be my hope, and I don't know about anybody else what that looks like. Anyway. So that's a neat significant action? Needs to be. Yeah. Needs to begin. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, we have a few more questions, so I want to be respectful of time. Um, are customer ideas and concerns gathered at each step of the coordination process? Is customer satisfaction data collected regularly? Yeah. Done well? I think, yeah, well enough, yeah. Um, are marketing and communications programs used to build awareness and encourage greater use of the services? This is where I'm thinking, you know, uh, Courtney has a lot of opinions on this, but um, I'm curious what she would have said here. Build awareness. Um, Maybe needs action. I think that's something that always is going to need action. Okay. Okay, um, I'm going to skip the evaluation and yeah. pull that later. Be significant action. Again, the or interplay with the community at large uh, hasn't been all that strong. We need to get more information out as to what transportation exists, how we can shape it to a system that's going to work for everyone. So I, I'd say that needs significant work, significant action. And, it, and I think, you know, we can stop today and just kind of, you know, just kind of, well, what did we go through and then we can come back and we get into mm -hmm. the other parts of this. I only have a few more questions if you wanted to finish the survey. 26. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, and then that way we okay. can, yeah, okay. 
Do you want to, or no? Okay. <laughs> um, is there an automated billing system in place that supports the seamless payment system and other contracting mechanisms? Just a couple more. Um, has an arrangement among diverse transportation providers been created to offer flexible services that are seamless to customers? Definitely needs significant needs action. action? Yeah. Okay. Um, are support services coordinated to lower costs and ease management burdens? Needs significant action. I think that's that's part of that brokerage model for the call center as well. So maybe just needs action. Okay. Significant action. Okay. And then two more. Is there a centralized dispatch system to handle requests for transportation services from agencies and individuals? Cell phone near the mics. Sometimes oh, oh, that. Metro, or I'm sorry, with Metro Mobility, there's no way you, have, you want to be other, you want to be in charge of your own dispatch. So this should probably say reservation, but that's just a technicality. Okay. Do we want to go with needs action or significant action? And last one, have facilities been located to promote safe, seamless, and cost-effective transportation services? <laughs> <They're located>. <laughs> <laughs> significant action. Significant? Yeah. Okay. I'll compile this and send it out in the next meeting. taking over. Uh, webinars are going on right now for all the training. So um, I know that there was only a handful of us that were doing the Medi Medicaid um, subcommittee. Can we reach out to everybody that was in that meeting and or if anybody <coughs> else wants to join? Um, with that going live, what is this, March 1st? Mm -hmm. I think that we're all going to have a lot of questions and maybe we can help each other get through that process. And in that, could we reach out to Lori Patterson from Northwest Cog? Um, she's always got, she's a wealth of information, always. Um, and uh, could we get something together, like maybe even after February 6th, after you should be getting your login and your password. You should be able to set that up on their new web portal after February 6th. So I'd like to meet, if everybody doesn't mind, at the end of February to see where everybody's at. I don't know who's doing Medicaid at, the, at this point. Yeah, well, we were, so there's 
when Angel was here, we were doing a Medicaid. Um, I think what we did, we decided to do this component of this meeting in lieu of that separate committee meeting, but in this case, it sounds like it. There's a significant change, and I think that we could all help each other get through this process because it's not easy. There's a lot of webinars going on now. There's seven of them. Yeah. And, so, um, and that is just the navigation of the portal. That is not training on um, actually how to put it, how do you check eligibility. Um, so it's just the navigation of the portal. That's it. So, Bethany, would you be able to send out an email to this group that just asks who wants to be involved? And, yeah. In, uh, yeah. How do you want to define that? Right? Medicaid, any MT. Okay. Well, Are there already people on that subcommittee? Yeah, that's what I was just. Are they all here? Um, I, you know what, Gail and I were at the very end. We're the only two um, showing up, so I'm not sure who, who you have. I'd like to have Lori Patterson maybe call in. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, whoever. And there's several for-profit pro uh, transportation providers that are also going through this, so we could maybe include them as well. The coach, the Bayo. Like so everybody can just reply to Beth. Thank you. Appreciate it. So let's adjourn the meeting. So now, any, anybody else? Anything else? Any done? So eleven o'clock exactly. <laughs> no, we haven't.